Hello and welcome. We're here at the World Series. We've had a jam-packed weekend. Took a little time off, but we're back. We got a big show for you guys today. A lot of updates from what happened over the weekend. Who won bracelets? Hundreds of thousands of dollars. What's going on out there today? And what's going on with Ryan DePaulo and the COVID masking drama he's thrown himself into? That will wait until later. You guys are going to have to stay tuned for that. But right now we're going to cut out to the field. We've got our sideline reporter, Mincy, with a European, European legend, legend, Mustafa Kanit. If you could cut out to these guys, John, let's see what Mincy has for us. I believe Mustafa's deep in the 1500. All right, high noon, back, live in the wild. It's day two of the $1,500 freeze out. We're jumping right into it. They're on a break. We're joined by the one, the only, Mustafa Kanit, the pride of Italy. Day two, how are you today? I'm good. I'm great. Now we see even better. So day two of this tournament, how are we feeling? You got some chips? 100 left. I mean, playing for some money. Yeah, I mean, up and downs, you know. I lost a few pots, won some, but you don't care about this. That's fair. Well, what we do care about is you're the pride of Italy, so I want to ask a little bit about that. First of all, I heard you have uh, quite the lovely uh, lady friend. Lady friend? Yeah, I heard you've got a beautiful girlfriend. I do have a beautiful girlfriend, it's true. Okay. Well, what do you... The old one or the new one? Which one? <laughs> See? There you go. First world problem. So, what would you say... I heard... Do, do, does the United States, can you find good Italian food around here? Or is yeah, it? actually, you can. There is a few restaurants I really like in Vegas. Like uh, Esther Kitchen is really good, and uh, Cipriani is international. They have it everywhere. What would you say? I mean, we used to all play with Italians in online poker. They never folded. They always played crazy. I kind of thought they sucked. What do you say to that? Yeah, back in the days, they, there, there is only a few survivors. I'm one of them. One like, of them. And you also said you lived all over Europe. You're kind of a backpacker. You move around. Uh, where all have you been? I lived in Malta, I lived in Vienna, I, lived, I live in London, uh, I have family in Barcelona, uh, I spend a lot of time in Italy, I'm originally Moroccan, I'm fucked up story. Man, world traveler, one of the best. Well, good luck to you on day two of the 1500, Mustafa Kanid, and thank you for joining us. Back to, what? oh, we're going to Johnny Vibes immediately. No, no, fuck Johnny Vibes. Fuck All right, I'm, I'm stoked to meet Johnny Vibes because I didn't get to meet him in real life yet. All right, all right, we're on. All right, hopping right back to it. We're out in the wild, day two of the 1500 on break. I've been following this guy on Twitter for a long time, and he's a great follower. First time to actually meet him in the flesh. Johnny Vibes, what's up, man? How are you? Uh, doing well. We're on day two, so, of course, we're in the money. Can't complain. Even though I have a short stack, I get to play with the legends like Mustafa, Diedrich Bass is at my table, Chino Reem mixing it up, so it's a lot of fun. This is definitely the featured table. I want to ask you about some of your content, because I've enjoyed following you for a while. Uh, you run around Vegas, you make quite an Im impression. You're a fun guy to follow. Uh, can you talk a little bit about that? Uh, I mean, it just started out as like a little creative project, and then people keep asking for more and more content. Started making it, so I don't know. It's just it's always been fun for me. I slowed down a little bit just because it wasn't quite as fun. But during the summer, I mean, it's it's I got to get back in there. There's just too many people around, too much fun content to make. All right, where are you from originally? Uh, I, I've lived all over the United States. My dad was in the army, but. If I had to claim a place, I'd probably claim Indiana. But I've lived in Vegas a long time, Southern California. Just kind of lived everywhere. Who's the better poker player, you or your brother? Uh, my brother in a landslide. My brother is like such – okay, so the way that we divide our time is I mess around. I design clothes. I travel. I make content, podcasts, all that stuff. My brother, he just studies. Just plays, studies. That's his whole life. So when you put that much of your energy into one thing – you're going to be great, and he is great. Where would the name Johnny Vibes come from? Uh, so I actually started a clothing company called it Vibes, and uh, so some of my friends started calling me Johnny Vibes, just, and some were just calling me Vibes for short. So it just kind of stuck. And when I created my YouTube channel name, I just used that. Never thought that it would, like, blow up or anything. But, yeah, now I'm Johnny Vibes. Well, you seem like a – look, I follow you. You seem a lot more like a positive vibes than a negative vibes guy. Uh, that's, that's one of the things that people say, but honestly, I'm just a, a vibes guy. Okay. You know, if you read the room. Yeah. If, if like, I, I'm generally like an even keel person, so I, I'm generally trying to stay positive, but I wouldn't call myself an overly positive guy. I'm just a, a guy that likes to, uh, just, uh, think deeply about the world. Okay. Yeah. Intuitive, deep thinker. Well, I'm a positive guy as well. I'm thrilled to be back. High noon, the only daily show live from the WSOP on the Poker Go YouTube channel. We're going to go back to Will, Jaffe, and Ryan DePaulo. Thanks for joining us, Johnny Bob. Good luck. Yeah, Thank you, Mincy. Mincy's going to be out there all day in the field.
Day two of the 1500, only 100 players left. Chino Ream, maybe the chip leader up towards the top of the chip counts. Have you played with David Chino Ream before? I've not. I just met him for the first time the other day in line with Sean Deeb. And um, I had to mention to him, I was like, it'd be disingenuous for me to meet you and not mention that I made fun of you in a bit. And he thought it was funny that at the end of the Alec Torelli angle chip stack booster bit I did where you paint both sides of it and you can rotate it to show whichever denomination you want to show that I was like buy today and also I'll throw in debt consolidation four by Chino Ream and he and he laughed and then Deeb was like also was like yo didn't I have a good line about you last year when we were in like the 100k or something and Jake Schindler was there and I asked you Chino how does it feel to not be the biggest scumbag at your table for once and Chino was mad cool he liked it and, and I like him and he's charming and I think he's good now um, but yeah, they're Johnny Vibes, Mustafa Kinnit. Shout outs to Italy. Uh, I used to know a little Italian, but oh, dimenticato tutto. Mi dispiace. What does that mean? I forgot everything. I'm sorry. I, like, I don't remember anything. You are Italian. technically Italian. Technically half Italian, 12% Jewish, enough to be killed in the Holocaust, and then the rest a white mm, potpourri. Yeah, the constant struggle with DePaulo getting us canceled has continued throughout the show. But we're, we're, we're here. We got a lot going on. I want to show you guys some of the stuff that happened over the weekend. German Wunderkind, Leon Sturm, won the 50K uh, for over $1.5 million, beat the legend Bill Klein heads up. So a million dollars is going to charity right off the bat. Um, Producer John, if you could show us this clip of the final hand, kind of a crazy hand. Queen Jack. 8-5. An 8. Oh, and a jack on the flop. A pair of 8s checked over to the pair of jacks. You never know what Klein's going to do with the piece of it. Sometimes he gets really aggressive, but this time he is able to just find the call. Come on. All in, announced by Klein with a pair of eights. I don't think Sturm can fold. It would just be an exploit to do it. It's pretty much a mandatory he call. makes the call. Bill oh, Klein that's a really, that's a really good hand. in that's trouble really good hand. against the Jacks. One card to come. Good luck. Queen Jack. Bill Klein looking for an eight or a five to double up and take the chip lead. If Sturm can see anything else fall, he is a bracelet winner. The sentimental favorite, Bill Klein, looking for an eight or a five on the river. Sturm ahead with the Jacks. Here's the river card. The deuce of hearts and it's over. Incredible. Bill Klein comes up just short. What a legend. All the money's probably going to charity. Like he's donated many million millions before. Do you, do you know Bill Klein at all? I don't know. I want to know why he's a legend. Well, I mean, I think you can see he's constantly out here playing big events, donating everything to charity, open shoving 8-5 into the German Wunderkind, who we're not sure, but may be younger than Adrian Mateos. I need to check with our producers to see who is actually younger between Leon Sturm and Adrian yeah. Mateos. No, this kid is like 17, and uh, Bill Klein, I have many more questions about to unpack. I couldn't figure out. He's a general businessman, apparently. But uh, I think we have Ryan Lang. Maybe I'll continue these questions in a moment. Everyone hold your thoughts on Bill Klein. We also have a super chat to read. But we'll go to Ryan Lang with Mincy in a minute. All right, we're back out in the wild. We're lucky to catch some uh, excellent players on their break. Day two of the $1,500 freeze out. I believe under 100 people left. We're joined by Ryan Lang and online legend Christian Harder. Ryan, first of all, how are you? I'm great. How are you? Doing good. So uh, you got some chips in this thing? How's your WSOP going? Yeah, uh, it's been a slow start to the WSOP, but I got a lot of chips in this, so. There you go. Long summer. Uh, how's your table? 
Uh, table's great. I've been just bluffing my balls off. I started with 600, went down to 200, up to 800, down to 200, back up to 800. So I have a great image. Uh, if I can make some hands, I'm going to have a ton of chips. When you're bluffing your balls off, I assume you never show or you show some? I show all the time. You show all the time. Why, why do you do that? My bluffs, not my balls. Okay. So why, why do you show your bluffs if you're doing it consistently to all these guys? Uh, just to cultivate a, you know, a bluffy image and then try to make some hands and get paid. Hard to make hands and hold them, but if you do, it sounds like you'll get paid. So you've got 800 k right now? Yeah. All right. Well, good luck on day two. Joined by Christian Harder, a guy I've known about for a heck of a long time. Shoot, I've been playing online with him for 15, 20 years. Many have come and gone. I like That's one of my favorite things about your career, as you've posted about this on Twitter before. So many greats have come and gone. You're still standing. How have you been so consistent over all these years? You know, just showing up, basically. I'm just out here, out here grinding. I mean, 10 a.m. restarts. I'm, I'm barely here, I'm going to be honest. I'm, like, falling asleep at the table. But, uh, you know, just showing up and playing well and trying to do my best. That's because you're an old man now and your eyes look a little glazed over. Uh, how are you doing this tournament? Uh, I'm short. I, I'm the anti-Lang today. So I'm not playing that many hands, have 100K. But, you know, I'm still in. Big Maryland and D.C. guy, you still living up in that area? Yeah, go Orioles. Go Orioles. World well, Series champ. Are you out here playing a full schedule this summer? Um, for me, for me, pretty full. Yeah, I'm playing a couple, some smaller mixed tournaments and Nolan and Pilo tournaments. That's cool. So, how long have you played mixed? Um, on and off for like a few years, but I, I'm playing mostly the smaller mixes. Okay. Yeah. Well, good luck. I hope you run it up. Uh, it's Charter Thirty Online, Christian Harder, all-time online poker legend. Good luck to Ryan and Christian on day two of the fifteen hundred. Back to Will Thanks Jaffe go. and Ryan DePaula. Go nights go. Yeah, that Thank too. You, see, uh, Charter 30, legend yes. of the game, one of the nicest guys, best players, came up just short in the 5K half and half, almost won his first bracelet. One of the best players in the world without a bracelet, a live bracelet. But speaking of live bracelets, right next to us, we have the heads up of the $800 deep stack, over 400000 to first. Uh, we just saw a big hand, chips exchanged. A lot going on here at the World Series. Uh, what, what's what's your series been like? I heard you made day two of the triple draw somehow. Yeah, I made day two of the deuce to seven triple draw. That um, that starts at one o'clock in a little bit. I'm excited. I don't know how. I never played the game before. Got a little coaching from Matt Waxman. Brief one hour phone call the night before. Is it true that Matt Waxman has gone off into the world of peyote and holistic mushrooms and is just doing coaching now, not actually playing anymore? Well. Uh, he has some side projects. Side projects. I, I no. He's he uh, as as his friend Scott Baumstein likes to say. He doesn't like to work, but he does. He's working on other things. There's there's so much going on here. Day two with 100k. We got to go over all the other bracelet winners since we've been gone. I just want to not ignore a ten dollar super chat to interrupt the show, right? I mean, I feel like I should read it. That my friend Rob Kuhn for ten dollars paying me to read this troll of myself. Why does the Paul look like he just got a spray tan, but also looks like wax, and I just want to say, Rob, that it's better than looking like you just worked out but never worked out a day in your life, which is a good line for yeah, you. Yeah, it's better than looking like you're constantly sweating like Rob Kuhn, also looking like you're trying to have sex like Rob Kuhn, also looking like you're on vacation on a cruise slash retired like Rob Kuhn. Regardless, you can see if John can cut to that shot. The, the final table heads up right now for eight. Four hundred thousand dollars in a bracelet. We got Mincy, Mincy in there. Mincy's in the, in in the, the there. circle with with Hanksy. <laughs> somehow made it into. Maybe they can get a seat. Can we get a live <laughs> interview here from Mincy on the rail right next to us, literally feet away? A lot of money being played for serious, but that's not going to stop Mincy from getting some cutting edge interviews. I think he might be talking to some rail birds. I'm not sure what Mincy's up to. A but man of the people. While these guys are playing for the most money they've ever played in in their life. True man of the people. Mincy on the rail in the wild. What does he have for us? All right, we're on the rail of the 800 uh, deep stack heads up here at WSOP. But, hey, the beauty of the poker world, you never know who you're going to run into. Uh, we got Boston Rob and Tana, the founder of Run Good, which is kind of taking the poker world by storm. What's up, fellas? How are we doing today? Doing great, man. Thanks. You look like you got a nice tan. I saw you uh, at the pool kind of trolling everybody. <laughs> well, were you watching me at the pool? Oh, on social media. I thought you were watching. Yeah, no, it was good. I mean, such a great day here in Vegas, right? Get outside a little bit, enjoy the weather. Yeah, all these suckers in here trying to grind to make money. You know, the hell with that. Well, what are you up to today? Uh, hanging out. You know, the hockey games tonight. We're going to try to take that in and obviously catching up with some friends here. 
Hell yeah, I'm going to the hockey game as well, my second ever NHL game. And uh, we're also joined by Tana, day two. Uh, Tana, also founder of the Run Good Poker Tour, but also, man, can play a little poker too, day two of the Deuce to Seven. How's it going? That's going great. I mean, I, they told me that if I looked up Wikipedia and how to play Deuce to Seven, I'd go far. So here I am, day two. We're all surprised. We're all really surprised. <laughs> do, do you have any chips? Uh, I got a little bit. I got 11 big bets. Uh, I don't actually know what that means, but that's what Josh told me, so I figured that's a good thing. Shout out to Tana. Run, the Run Good Poker Series uh, grassroots thing has taken over the poker world. Y'all really blew up in this last year. I mean, now y'all in California, Florida, Ohio, y'all taking it all over. Uh, congratulations on your success. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. All right. We're going to go back. All right. All right. All right. Yeah, so uh, all right. Tana Karn, founder of Run Good, led into the game with Boston Rob, survivor legend. Yeah. You hear the celebration, big pot over there going on live as we speak. I'm not sure if that's the end of the tourney, but we look like we have a champion crowned. Oh, wow. Congratulations to that guy. Renji Mao, I believe, wins the $800 deep stack. If you could cut full to that, John, so we could really see what's going on there. Um, $400,000 in an $800 dollar buy-in tournament. That's what happens every day here at the World Series. <laughs> Mincy trying to grab an interview. This guy's stoked. <laughs> Just won the biggest tournament of his life. Probably wasn't expecting to have to do an interview with Mincy. We'll see if we can grab him, but what a win. Something Ryan DePaulo has never felt in his life. A big live win, but he's been close. It looks like they're ready. Let's not talk about <laughs> me. Tell me what right. We ready? Hello? Go. Hello? Go. Hey, right, Ricky. Con look, congratulations. We're on the rail. Ricky, just winning your first World Series of Poker bracelet. Yeah, I got something to do. All right. What? We got something to do. We're live. We have a bracelet. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Oh. <laughs> Look at this. What a moment. Only at the World Series of Poker. Congratulations, Ricky. Got a World Series bracelet. How does it feel? Uh, it's, I can't just describe how I feel. It's just amazing. I can never imagine I wing this. Like... It's just, it's just amazing. I, I, I couldn't imagine, like the first time I came, I think, okay, probably I'll come for like, play, play for like 20 years, maybe I'll win one. <laughs> it's my first, second time here, actually. I got a bracelet, I'm so happy. And just, I just, it's so exciting that so many friends uh, behind me, and it's just, feels great. Hell y'all, yeah, Ricky's friends, y'all happy for y'all's boy. I can't imagine the feeling. We've all chasing the dream. You just did it. Look at your shiny bracelet. I, I, I'm feeling your emotion. I'm loving it. It's so positive. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks so, so much. Where are you from? Uh, China. Um, my hometown, Shanghai, China. Yep. All the way from Shanghai, China, winning the $800 deep stack of the World Series of Poker for 402000 American dollars. My brain almost melted saying that number. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Never seen that many. Yeah. See in some power rollers. We're gonna do with the money. I don't know. Play more games. <laughs> Damn right. No gamble, no future. Back to Will and Ryan live from the WSOP on high noon. Congratulations. Ricky. Thank you. Thank you so much. Congrats. He came in. He was a little bit short, but he ends up taking it down. Heads up. Incredible stuff here at the World Series. This happens every day here for almost two months. It's so sick. I mean, how do you, I have the biggest smile on my face watching him. Congratulations, that's so cool. Like, uh, him being like, I didn't expect to make it this far, and now I won, he has his rail here. He was about to cry. I was I was feeling the, the energy. That's super cool. That's what that's what we're all here. All the, all the painful bust outs is for that one. That you know, one big, moment. Yeah. I've felt it live. DePaulo has not, but he has felt it in a Whole Foods parking lot in the middle of the morning in his car. I also don't know why it looks like our faces have been greased with hot oil. <laughs> the producers did not touch us, I swear, before the show. But on that note, I do want to remind you guys to do the most difficult thing you've done in your entire lives and just gently press the like button. If you could also share, subscribe. If there's any other buttons there, I I'm not really sure. Ryan's more familiar with YouTube. You can hit all of them. Um, yeah, just really watch. You know what I mean? It's really the biggest thing. But yeah, do all that. Do all that shit, tough guy, as, as Frank Rizzo would say. So, can we go back to Bill Klein for a second? Because I really have questions about this guy. Everyone calls him a legend. He donates to charity. He loses to Sh Leon Strum, who I played with like two years ago in the WSOP somehow. 
He's uh, like he's the kid is 12. He's a legend. He beats the old man, the legend Derry Geezer. But I can't find out. Everyone's like, oh, Bill Klein's a legend. And yes, he is. To see someone that old doing the moves he does is legendary. To allegedly donate to charity is legendary. But I couldn't find any information on what kind of businessman this guy was. So I'm wondering if these are reparations. If he made his money selling rhino horns, che cheetah paws, whale blowhole type of export. He made asbestos mandatory in all schools. Lead walls in the in the public school system in Manhattan is why my friend Johnny's a little <laughs> off. I don't know what his business was. and Maybe he feels guilty and he's giving back. What makes this a legend? I don't know. These are questions. I'm just asking the questions. To Paulo going... A little quick deep dive on Bill Klein. We we do not have that info from our producers. I don't believe he got rich selling whale blowholes. <laughs> and I also don't believe he is the reason for your friend Johnny or your friend Joey to mush his problems. I think those are separate. Maybe something in the New Jersey water that had nothing to do with Bill Klein. Um, but, yeah, legend Bill Klein, legend Ricky wins his first bracelet, 402000 Going to take the money and play more games. I'm not sure what games he's looking to play, but I'm sure they're going to be good ones. Um, but, yeah, we got a ton going on out here. Big shout-out to Mincy, our sideline reporter, getting the details in the dirt for you guys. Remember, I know I asked you about 39 seconds ago, but, again, if you could hit the like oh, button, God. is it possible to do it twice? Um Shout out to Rob Kuhn in the chat. But we've got Mincy back on the floor with what looks like a Golden Knights fan. Huge game for the Golden Knights tonight. Can take home the Stanley Cup with a win. It will be a crazy party in Vegas if that happens. Let's see what Mincy has for us. All right. All right, we're back out in the field in the wild, and uh, we're running into more characters, as you always do. Uh, first, we're joined by Chris Birchfield. He's playing the ROE event. Rocking uh, newest Vegas Golden Knights fan yeah. uh, from, from Houston. Went to his first NHL finals game the other night. How was it? It was amazing. Uh, my first NHL experience, and uh, I'm a, I've been a diehard Knights fan since game one of the Cup Stanley Cup finals, obviously. So, uh, no, I can't wait for them to close it out, and uh, they, they got me. They got you. I'm. I'm also. I've never. Been, I've only been to one NHL game. I'm going to Game Five tonight. I can't wait. Uh, let's catch up also with Sean Deeb, who's, you know, my, my partner this summer in crime. He just keeps going deep. I can't even follow how much you go deep in these tournaments. Or Deeb, I should say. Uh, 1500 eight game mix. Uh, your day three. Yeah, day three, like 20 left. A uh, couple killers. Uh, Nick Shulman, we got in a battle with him. We're, me and him are hoping to make the final table again. We had a lot of fun at the stud. And, uh, yeah, it's been uh, a great day. I had a lot of chips start yesterday. And I chipped up and lost a few pots at the end of the night. But I'm going to win. I noticed your stomach seems to be slimming. I see a flatter, flatter line here in your shirt. Yeah, you know, weird when you don't eat a lot and you run around multi-table and you actually lose weight. Eating less and moving more actually works. What a concept. Yeah, it's brand new to me. You know, it took me 37 years to learn that one. Well, referring to D Sean has the million-dollar weight loss bet through next May. So far, you're feeling good about everything? Yeah, I mean, I'm always, I'm always overconfident no matter what. So this this is another spot where I could be wrong, but uh, I'm definitely going to do whatever it takes uh, down the stretch. And, you know, this is I'm kind of slacking these weeks, but it's going to get better. I'm going to have a lot more time and just want to win a couple of bracelets because I can't let Josh Arier have more than me. Yeah, so Josh winning uh, the Limit Hold'em. I know you all have got some fun banner back and forth on Twitter. Uh, what, what are your thoughts? Man, if, if he watching Josh win mixed game tournaments and limit hold them doesn't make everyone listening think they can win an event, you're wrong. <laughs> well, Josh did put out a tweet saying, someone give me advice on heads up, limit hold them, and then he just wins it. So I guess that's hope for all of us. Yeah, I mean, I'm the one who gave him the advice. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. What'd you tell him? Uh, I'll... You don't have to share it with Yeah, I, I think I just told him to open like 85% of buttons, defend 75% of big, while three betting about 20%, you know, C bet super high frequency except for low connected boards, and, you know, just play crazy. It's like everyone's wide. Danny, he was playing heads up as a great limit holding player, has been playing for 20 plus years. So Josh actually had an increased variance versus him. He wasn't going to outplay him. So every bigger pot, you saw Josh ram and jam a bunch of draws. And when you're like 15 bets deep, if you're pushing slightly the worst of it, but increasing variance, it's going to reduce the uh, better player's edge. Sean Deeb, the one-man gang, he goes deep in everything. He gives world-class poker advice, and he's a fitness guru. What can't this man do? Uh, probably spell. <laughs> spell. Well, we're going to have some workout content and uh, come in with Deeb and me soon. We're going to go back to Will and Ryan live here at High Noon in front of the World Series of Poker. Good luck today. Incredible. Um, speaking of which, Josh Arie wins his fifth bracelet. Um, 
in the $10,000 limit Hold'em event over $300,000. The guy seems to win something every summer. Kind of frustrating. Uh, if producer John could pull up that picture to just show the fans kind of what's really going on mm. with Josh Arie, um, a look into the life of a legend. Uh, it's more than just a game poker, people, just so you know. Josh Arie. I want to thank all you guys for watching today. We're hitting our sweet spot, 420 viewers. Keep that number going up. Let's keep this show on the air. They Let's can't clone themselves. I think you're pushing it a little hard there, Will. Like, they can't, they can't duplicate. They're like, multi-account YouTube guys and watch on multiple devices. Yeah, I know it's not, I know it's frowned upon, but if you guys can multi-account, <laughs> that would be great for Ryan and I and producer John. He's on the verge of getting fired for too many technical difficulties, but we're trying to keep him around, keep his job intact. So do what you guys can. Meanwhile, out on the floor, in the wild, look at this animal out there. Can we get a full shot of this guy, John? <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever licked your wife's face just like... When she, they're no. about to take a photo of her, just, just a full lick? Never. We are here, day two of the 1500, very serious stuff. Dietrich Fast, I believe he's a Euro. Chino Ream in the field. Johnny Vibe standing up. Um, we'll see if we can get Mincy over to the bust out line. That was a big hit on one of our previous shows, but a lot of stuff going on out here. You see Johnny Vibes texting, maybe planning a vlog in the future. Mm. Um, but I want to show you guys a clip uh, from the, the legend... I believe 16, 17 time I, I, I ran out, out, out I ran, of fingers. I ran out of fingers. Um, and words. <laughs> and and I, I don't know what our cameraman is doing. You see the artistic genius at work, but Phil Helmuth put out this tweet recently. I want to share with you guys Well, before our cameraman gets himself into a lot of trouble. <laughs> trying to fill. The latest month, 40 people in one day coming up to me, poker fans, and saying, I love you, Phil. I love you, Phil. I love you, Phil. And... To me, it means at least they know that I'm not a bad guy, and uh, you know, and they see that I'm actually a good guy. So, I love that. I'm authentic. I leave it all on the line. It's mind blowing. It's like when you know Elon Musk, you know, was hanging out with me, or Michael Jordan, or Tiger Woods, or you know, some of these crazy spots you find yourself winning in, winning a bracelet, uh, breaking records. It's all mind blowing, and you have to be able to kind of deal with that in your own way without being too egotistical, especially it's a long series and I don't want my ego to blow up. So thank you to the people that say that I love you. I, I know what you mean. And I, I appreciate the fact that at least, you know, I'm a good guy. Uh, luckily we have an expert to Paulo. What's the, what's the most times in a day someone has come up to you here and said that they loved you? Has that ever happened? No, they come up to me and say, fuck your mom. And it's like a nice hello, literally. Or a guy slapped me on the ass the other day. We were on break coming back from the tournament and he was like, <laughs> All right, Paul, and then just like did like that, and it was it was nice. But I don't. That doesn't mean I'm not a piece of shit. That means not, Yo, that is a, that is that's an insane person. That's someone who's been disconnected from reality for quite a long time. But Phil Hellmuth is the man. But just because people say they love you, you know, people say they love Kanye West all the time in public. He's probably a psychopath. He's probably a psychopath, right? That doesn't mean that, Phil, right? And and I understand. I can relate to, you know, when I'm hanging out with Michael Jackson and Bing Crosby and all the all Eliza Minnelli, and then 22 people come up to me and say, fuck your mom. You know, it does confirm to me that I'm a great person also. DePaulo, again, on a suicide mission to get us canceled, if you could just maybe minimize the F-bombs to one every 20 minutes, that would probably keep our... Uh producers and bosses a little happier. Meanwhile, we're uh, nearing the 500 viewer mark. We got more action in the field. It looks like Mustafa Kanit, the Italian genius, one of the only good Italian players remaining in the world, is all in winning a pot here in the 1500. DiPaolo does not count as Italian, uh, okay. even though he knows something. And we got Chino Reem and Johnny Vibe seated next to each other. Talk about a table of death, mm. day two of this 1500. Yeah, that's not the table you want. And uh, I think Filippo Candio is still out there fighting, so I wouldn't uh, count him out. But Sh shout out to Filippo Candio. Speaking of which, it's time for your guys' favorite part of the show. I know why you're all watching. WSOP main event winners trivia with Ryan DePaulo. Five names. you got to guess the year. Are you ready? Yes. Martin Jakobsen. 2014. Correct. Pius Hines. Oh, this is like the crap year they streamed with no whole cards. 2011? Uh, uh, yes. Amarillo Slim. 79? Close, 72. Tom McAvoy, the cowboy. 70, 
nine. I'm going to have to cut you off because we've got a cutting edge shot of Nick Palma. Looks like he's eating something in the field, taking a day off from the pool. Let's let's get a full screen of this. We need to see what he's eating, producer John. What is what is Nikki Palma getting yeah, this into? This is very important that we get a full screen of this. Good technical work. He's eating, talking with his mouth full. No one can hear him. He's saying something New York like. He's uh. Yeah, speaking. Are you guys related at all, De Paulo Palma, New York? De Palma. Yeah, he lives in the Bronx. I used to live in the Bronx. We very well maybe. I don't know what my dad was up to for many years during my childhood. He could have birthed other. Is this sort of a revenge thing where you guys may be dealing with the same asbestos issue that you were trying to blame Bill Klein for? <laughs> What's up with that? I don't know why New York produces people like us. Like, I, I, I don't know what happens to your brain. I think it's all the stimuli just overloads you, and then you just end up being, like, a loud psychopath. But I, lo I love the New York energy, obviously. Um, you know... Nick Palma's hilarious. You guys, he's the most viewed. Him and Alan Kessler are tied for the most viewed, least interacted with tw Twitters on 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 Twitter in poker. And poker Twitter is cancer, by the way. All of Twitter is cancer, by the way. I do not recommend it. I I, I recommend you just stay on YouTube and watch this. Sign up for Poker Go. Um, Speaking of which, DePaulo got himself in a little mm. bit of trouble recently. I wanted to give him some time while he's on air with this many viewers to kind of clear the air if he wants to and just describe what's been going on. What what happened to Paula? Okay, so I believe we just have Bonomo's response, right? Let me say what, what, what he's responding to first, John, producer John, as, as Will calls you. Um, so I, on this very show two weeks ago, we, were, we saw footage of the 25K or something, and Bonomo had a mask on. And I asked the question, 0% joking, 100% serious. With no humor whatsoever, are they edge-seeking Ike Haxton and, and Justin Bonomo by wearing masks, or are they just COVID douchebags? It was an innocent question. Then I look into Justin Bonomo's Twitter and come to find out he has asthma and doesn't want to inhale cigarette smoke. And I just say, you know, I just wanted to know if he was edge-seeking or now confirmed for pussy. Again, totally serious. No humor at all in this. You know what I mean? You guys know me. Everything I say is dead serious. So now Poker.org, and shout-outs to Ace Poker, stirs the pot up, interviews me about it, and now this is Bonomo's response to me that we're going to play, and then I'll, I'll three-bet respond. I don't really know who this guy is, so it's just like someone I don't really want to devote energy to. Mm -hmm. um, my thoughts on the mask thing are pretty simple. Like, if people want to wear a mask, like, they're not hurting anyone. Why would you have a problem with it? If anything, they're keeping people safer. Um, I, I just think we have kind of like, I don't really know who this guy is, so it's just like someone I don't really want to devote energy to. Mm -hmm. um, my thoughts on the mask thing are pretty simple. Like, if people want to wear a mask, like, they're not hurting anyone, why would you have a problem with it? If anything, they're keeping people safer. Um, I, I just think we have kind of like, obviously there's a political split in the U.S., and it's unfortunate to see, like, how popular bullying's become, and, like, I really want to make a stand against bullying. Like, I just... I think there should be more compassion in the world, you know? So, I don't know, I don't know who this Bonomo guy is, but, no, I mean, look, all right, I have a few thoughts. One is, I, in, in some seriousness, right, I have no problem, I sit at tons of tables with people wearing masks, and I don't judge them at all. I don't care. I'm judging you, Bonomo. I want you. And if you call me a bully one more time, I'm going to give you the worst wet willy of your life. And then a swirly, all right, brother? There I'm you, not a bully. There you have it. DePaulo is not a bully at all. Also masks up, apparently. I'm not exactly sure why. I don't um, care. They're making me debate COVID, and everyone on Twitter is so dumb. Like, yo, yo, they're making me debate COVID in 2023. It's like seven years ago. I don't care. All the MAGA people are like, yeah, I knew Ryan hated, hated, you know, minorities. And then the other side is like, Ryan is such a bigot bully. I hate him. He hates everybody. The, the other thing I do want to say in all seriousness is I will um, issue... Let me see. I wrote it down here, the terms of my... Apollo has prepared something in his journal here. I challenge you, Justin Bonomo, to heads up. And if I win, you have to smoke a pack of Newports. If you win, I will adopt a trans kid. There you heard it first. Uh, DePaulo issuing a challenge um, to, to one and only Justin Bonomo. 
deep in the 100K. Meanwhile, we've still got action in this 1500. The action does not stop no matter what the Twitter beef is, no matter what the political issue is. We keep it rolling here at high noon. The train must go on. You guys know what to do. Like, subscribe, send this to your grandparents if they're still here with us um, watching this beautiful moment at the World Series of Poker here in the Horseshoe Casino. Just a incredible stuff. Um, we, we, I want to show you guys a little a little plug for our merch at Poker Go um, here that Mincy did for us the other day. If you could cut to that, producer John. We're in the hallway at Paris at the World Series of Poker, and we have got some serious merchandise for you to check out. Let's take a look around and see what we can find, because I know there's a lot of items I'm looking forward to wearing this summer. It's always cold in these rooms. Look, it may be hot outside in the desert in the summertime, but you're still going to need a hoodie when you're at the World Series of Poker. And we've got a bunch of good ones for you to check out. we got Poker Go Tour, Pull, pull Over. We're joined by Brian. Hello. Well, I'm about to go pick out some merch because luckily for me, I think Poker Go felt sorry for me and hired me this summer. So I need to get some Poker Go swag to rep out here at the World Series. Brian, what should I get? Um, I would say uh, first I would spin a wheel because then you can get a 10% discount. 10% discount? You're telling me I don't get free merch? Look, I, I thought it was assumed I got free merch coming out here. I'm really kind of going through a tough stretch here. Are you sure you don't have anything free? 100% do not have anything. I have sticker. Want a sticker? Let's go to the wheel. Okay, let's go to the wheel. It seems like Poker Go's doing pretty well. I didn't know times were that tight. Yeah, no, times are definitely tight. Definitely tight. Well, well, maybe let's spin the wheel. The wheel, I've been told the wheel is just. So let's see what we get. Let's see if I can run a little better with this wheel that I've been running out here so far. Look at this. An annual Poker Go subscription. Congratulations. Thank you. I'm, I'm so honored. And while you're at it on the annual Poker Go subscription, if you want one of those, sign up for co with code Mincy. $20 off. I mean, you have to get Poker Go with the best World Series of Poker content all summer long. Check us out. Live streams of featured tables. And we've got a high noon show, the only daily show from the World Series of Poker. Mincy, ladies and gentlemen, in the wild, go check out the Poker Go store over at Paris. We're here in the Horseshoe. Lots of stuff going on in the field. Day two of this 1500. DePaulo, in about 20 minutes, is about to get into day two, day two of the Deuce to Seven, I believe. Um, speaking of players in the field, we got more action here. Very serious stuff happening at the World Series. A lot of money on the line. A chip mountain. I, I'm not sure if that is Pesh to Silva. I don't know if you can tell. If we get a full shot of that, producer John. It would make sense if Pesh is protecting himself from COVID because famously he, uh, in the COVID main event, if you remember, he made the final table with like a chip lead. It was a hybrid online and live event at the end of 2020. 10K entry online. Then you make a live final table. But if you tested positive for COVID, you were disqualified. Your stack was not even in play to blind out and hope that you could get a pay jump. And he just got straight disqualified. So obviously he's terrified of COVID. And again, I judge nobody for wearing masks except Justin Bonomo. I just want to make that clear. Isaac Haxton is trolling MAGA people. Any troll, valid reason, I'm on board with. You don't want to inhale smoke because you're soft? I don't DePaulo, accept! DePaulo is going to, we may send him early to the Deuce to Seven if he keeps this up. Really hijacking the show with his own political beliefs. They're not political <laughs> beliefs, yo. <laughs> I don't care. DePaulo says he doesn't care, but is constantly screaming. Um, but this is this is what you get on High Noon. You never know what you're going to get. World Series of Poker, we're, we're nearing the middle of June. Is, is burnout starting to set in for you, DePaulo? Well, no, that honestly, the mixed games, uh, like, I would say yes to be funny, but uh, being serious, playing Raz, which I played poorly in, but uh, playing Deuce to Seven Triple Draw, which, as you said, I have in a couple minutes, is helping the burnout stay away. You fit right in in a mixed games crowd. Angry, loud, love to curse, constantly rude to dealers. Do you just feel right at home in these events? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm nice to dealers. I'm very nice. I'm rude to the other players. I'm very disrespectful to the other players. But to dealers, I'm nice. Is that an edge-seeking technique, being rude to other players? Uh, no, I think it's just me being a jerk. 
But in these, I'm charming because I'm trying to get information out of them, right? I need to know, did I miss a bet there? Should I have played that different? Although yesterday I didn't reveal how inexperienced I was at the game, and I think I got away with it. Timmy Ho in chat says, DePaulo Trump 2024. Jesus, I don't want to be lumped in with anything, yo. Flat Smack says, Bitcoin Ethereum 2024. Jesus, Let us yo. know your favorite combo. These political takes. I'm not voting for Bitcoin Ethereum. De Santos DePaulo 2024 makes more sense. <laughs> I don't know how this show has become so political. We're just here at a poker tournament trying to show you guys what's going on out there on the floor. Paulo has hijacked the show. Uh, Shout out to Timo Siciliano in chat. says, the new AI players from Westworld are sickening, sickening reality into our future. Yeah, do you watch Westworld, Paulo? No, I watch like those summary, like those YouTube videos that steal the content basically and just give recaps of it i've watched that do you watch westworld no we've got our latest update though hillary DePaulo, 2024 who's your favorite running mate who would you run for president with DePaulo? well i think i believe that refers to bob hillary and i love bob hillary because usually you don't have their first names on the thing not hillary clinton who would be my running mate joey the mush and who would who would be president who would be vice between you and the mush Are you kidding me me and then like the whole world would try to keep me alive at all at all costs um Johnny Vibe stacking chips there. Enough of my presidential run. I haven't announced anything formally, and I don't want to get involved in the crypto debate, Ethereum, Bitcoin, 2020, DeSantis, Ethereum, 2024, uh, Mincy, Mincy, Mincy Vibes, 2024. Lonnie Stinson asked, no read the report today. No, unfortunately, our intern Carson, you saw her in the, in the Poker Go merch ad there. She's taking a little break. I think she'll be back with us later in the summer. We also have our wonderful sideline reporter, Natalie, returning to work tomorrow we will be streaming through this week guys appreciate you guys all hanging with us today here at the world series of poker in the beautiful horseshoe casino in las vegas the weather is nice before it gets too hot before DePaulo really loses it this is what we're trying to do this is what we're trying to bring you guys live from the wsop world series of poker 2023 what a time. You saw Ricky win his first bracelet with $400,000 live. Mincy sick. caught him with the interview. I mean, just amazing stuff. Every day, something crazy happens here, whether it's political or just poker. I mean, what more can you ask for? I mean, there were technical difficulties that day, but Ronnie Barda, in, in our second episode, coming over here hobbled, angry, talking about a hand history. Shout-outs to him. We got a settlement on that right away. We've seen a bracelet winner. Uh, have you... I want to ask you something, and I want to ask the chat and this and comment below. Like, how many times have you guys physically, if ever, bagged for a day, too? Like, it's something that's fun to do even if you're not in the money. And it's, like, so cool coming back with, like, a little bank bag and ripping it open. And it's, like, exciting no matter how far from the money you are, no matter how few chips you have. How many times do you think you physically bagged for a day, two in your poker career? I have bagged over 100 day twos. Really? Over 100. Oh, yeah. that, wow, that's sick. Yeah. And yet I'm only 100 behind you in New York's all-time money list. You're coming for me. Speaking of coming, we got Nikki Palma in a pot. <laughs> Not at the pool today, but he's in a hand here. And uh, the coming for your chips, uh, some more presidential candidates. DePaulo Adderall, 2024. I, I do like that one. Um, we've got NY Poker King and Chino Ream, 2024. A lot of new presidential candidates being thrown to the running. Thank you to the chat. Shout out to the mod father, Jimmy Bluffett. Shout out to Poker Pro Eric, involved in some drama. I don't know if you've been following this Twitter space drama, Ryan, but uh, a lot of stuff has been going on with uh, different members of the community, Twitter spaces. One character has taken over. You're not in the Twitter spaces, are you? I listen for five minutes, and then I feel like I'm going to get AIDS of the ear and just leave immediately. It's horrible. They're horrible. It's just drama, nonsense, dr uh, drunken buffoonery. People think they're famous and they're not. It's very stupid. Very stupid. None of us are known. All of this is trash. I hate everybody. What a Mizreg like take. Are um, you have you become officially become a Mizreg? Is that what you want to announce well, today? Well, as far as this Twitter space drama, it's just so it's like fun. I'll stop in and then be like, why am I filling my brain with this death? Um, why am I filling my brain with this death? Speaking of filling your brain with death, thank you guys so much for joining us. If you could still remember to hit that like button, I think the final verdict is in. Rob Kuhn and DePaulo for president, 2024. 
punter's pad is going to take it down. What's going on? Can you tell us a little bit about the punter's pad? Do you guys have any challenges lined up? What's Who's winning the Triton Challenge? What's what's the latest details over there? Yeah, so for just to fill in, if people don't know, we're at punter's pad, America's card room, puts us the team pros up in a Airbnb in a house for the WSOP, and they're documenting five of us with a set bankroll, who does the best in, in the same tournaments we're playing. We'll get 125K Triton package to London. We played four events. Um, three people have caches. I believe Ebony and I have none. And then Rob, John Party, and Drew each have a cache. So it, it'll come down to the main event, basically, um, probably. However, I don't know. My first bullets in them, and the challenge is not going well. I don't know what question you asked me most recently. I'm just kind of talking here. Uh, We're just rambling on as this 1500 continues. But I still continues. have more stuff to go to. You know, I mean, Adrian Mateos, the the other 12 year old, like Leon Strom, is chip leading the 100K. They come back today. I cannot imagine entering $100,000 to play 100 of the world's best players. Seems quite dumb. But Mateos is chip leading that. Um, and then the other thing that happened since we're gone that I wanted to actually ask you about, did you hear when Isaac Haxton won his first bracelet in the 25K, and congratulations to him, he did have a mask on in the winner's photo, but that was for troll purposes, so again, I'm totally, that's great. Um, he said to the guy that he won heads up against, he goes, I'll pay you right away, I'll pay you right away. I don't know if you caught that, but I assume they chopped, um, which, for those of you who don't know, WSOP does not facilitate chops, so you have to just trust the person. Someone like Ike, I would. But it's still a, a risk. Would you... Breaking news, yeah. I did not chop when I won my bracelet. It was an older man from Brazil. Oh, can't do business with them. No. Um, it, would, it would not have been wise <laughs> for me. I, I don't, don't, uh, don't support chops unless you are uh, you know really need the money. Um, but, uh, yeah, we, we have some action still in this 1500, guys. Come down to the horseshoe. If you're ever here, stop by. Say hi to me and to Paulo. Maybe bring us a mask of your choosing. And we'll wear it on stream and give you guys a shout out. But shout out to everyone in the chat. Um, Kathy Liebert, Maurice Hawkins, 2024, another great presidential candidate, possibly in the in the making here. These guys can't do a worse job than the past few, can they? I think they'd be great. I'd vote for them. DePaulo, losing energy here, trying to mentally prepare himself for day two of the deuce to seven triple draw. Is that correct? That's correct. Yeah, I've, I should be doing mental prep, but... I guess I'm getting nervous now. I don't know how far off the money we are. There's like 165 of us left. I think 80 get paid. Um, I would love to cash, but I need to head over there in a sec. Oh, we have Mincy with Nick Shulman look like ready. I don't know if he bagged in that with me. He's probably in something way. Yeah, like Sean Deeb told us that uh, Nick Shulman's still alive with him in the dealer's choice. Nick Shulman has Ooh. already made a final table in the limit event and won the seven-card stud event in epic fashion. Let's go out to Mincy, see what he has for us. All right, we're back live, uh, joined by the man, the myth, the legend, Nick Shulman, getting ready for day three of 1,508 game mix, only 20 left. Uh, how are we feeling going into this? Feel good. How are you doing? I, I'm doing pretty damn good, you know. I'm feeling, re feeling rejuvenated. Uh, you got any chips? Uh, yeah, middle of the pack. A little bit below average, but, you know, it's pretty wide open. Limit tournaments are, are sort of – lock can happen. Well, Sean Deeb said, you know, he the only person he's respected left in the field was you. So what does that mean to you? That's a pretty cold thing to say from Sean, but, you know, he just – what does that even mean? I mean, that, but, I mean, I, well, yes, Sean is – I have a lot of respect for him, too. He really is – when it comes to these limit tournaments, if you want to play these things, you, you got to see Sean at some point. So, you know, always got to be ready for him. All right, so you're balancing, uh, doing all kinds of broadcasting, do a hell of a job with that. You're playing a lot. How's your summer going so far? Thank you. It's going good. I mean, I've been mostly playing. Um, made some runs. You know, I, I'm, uh, I'm happy so far. Well, so we saw the cigar photo from the, the stud final table. Do you break out the cigar if you win? Do you have it for today? What's going on? I feel like I either go cigar exclusively, you know, forever, or I just let it sit there for, for that one moment in time. I'm going to let it sit. Or, yeah. So are you going to bring it back when you win the bracelet? Tonight, like Joe Burrow style? Tonight. But yeah, after, but, but not while I'm playing. So, okay, there you have it. Uh, Nick, we had the investigation of the cigar. Nick, not the official cigar guy if he's only going to do it every now and then. Right. Exactly. Uh, Pink Floyd said it best. Hope you get a victory and you have a cigar. Thank you, Mincy. Right. Later, guys. Yeah, good luck. Nick Shulman, 
Epic, we still did not get any clarification on Cigargate, whether Nick Shulman was impersonating Cuz or not, but tough to not love that guy. One of the legends, the most loved, revered people, one of the most epic commentators, poker players, cigar smokers, glasses wearer. DePaulo, do you ever break out the shades at the table? I, no, I, I don't, because I feel like that they're very, like, 90, like, it's like tattoos, right? Like, 90% of the time, they're crap, and then 10% are cool. It's probably even worse with sunglasses. Like, 95% of the time, you just look like an idiot, and then 5% of the time, you're Nick Shulman looking super cool, you know? Do you wear polarized sunglasses when you do wear them? I used to wear blue blockers, um, you know, like old ladies have. What about Blue Shark Optics? But probably a similar idea. They probably stole from blue blockers. <laughs> where you can't see the color blue. The color blue, the color of the sky, the color of uh, the $100,000 chips here at the Horseshoe. A lot of stuff going on. I'm here with Ryan DePaulo before he enters into day two. Uh, how are you feeling today? Does this cash count towards the Triton package if you make it? It doesn't. There's another one going on with like all the team pros at America's Card Room, like all of us, not just in the punter's pad. So instead of one out of five, it's everyone and it's uh, based on multipliers of your entry um so if i win that'll be a 25x jeff boski shout out to him congratulations he won a 500 at mgm for 47k the other night so he's in the lead for that for the team pro package and shout out to phil nagy in america's card room for even doing this for us it's super sick i'm super grateful and lucky to be in with them well i want to show you guys a cutting shot of the floor this is DePaulo's competition today you see these men unbagging their chips Pretty soon, Ryan DePaulo gets to play with them for a bracelet and six figures. Uh, only the toughest competition here at the World Series of Poker. The crown jewel, the you know main event, the most important time of the year for poker. Just a wonderful thing. You're being sarcastic, but I think that at my table last night, three of the guys would fi fire, admitted that they fired the 10K of the deuce to seven. Um, like I was drawing pretty thin. I think I missed a couple bets. I... Hope none of them are. Well, I hope all of them are watching this, but then I hope they're not listening for this part because I am not going to tell anyone that I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, I mean, my play may speak for itself. I don't know if tanking is appropriate when we're nearing the bubble, but I certainly will be. I will do any tactic I need to. If they want us to not tank to make the money, make a shot clock. You know what I mean? I'm going to do it all. I'll let them call clock. I'm going to spill coffee on the table, mispay the ante. Any tactic you have to do, it's not my own money. You know what I mean? Do you see the sexy side shot of us? See, we're much better looking than this greasy front cam, right? Um, and this is not not any due to reality of what we look like. This is the opposite of a TikTok filter. This is a grease. DePaulo, looks like you got a fresh lineup today. Can you tell the people where you got your lineup, your little uh, shave, you know, that at the haircut done? Yeah, I went to a place called Barbershop in Spring Valley. Um, and I saw my man's Alex. They were actually onloading from one of the guy's pickup trucks, workout, pre-workout protein, prob clearly fell off the back of a truck, and my barber offered me numerous times if I wanted any. I said, no, I need to work out for that. <laughs> and he's like, you sure don't want any? Wait, you actually work out? No. Never. I mean, I did. I had a Guido phase, of course. All Italians have to have that period of time where you try to find your father type of thing. To Paula, with a lot more Italian info than uh, I thought we were going to get on this show, and you see the shot of me there, uh, really great side shot, love the way the side of my face looks, um, and I'm happy that you guys, uh, and thanks to our wonderful cameraman, uh, Antonio, you see the artistic genius at work here. Uh, Producer John, if you could cut that shot off now, thank you. <laughs> Good, it's better. All right, I got to go over there. DePaulo's going to run. Thank you so much for uh, your contributions today, uh, Ryan. And uh, good luck in the deuce to seven. His first time ever playing. Makes a day two. He's going to be in there. Hopefully he doesn't get us canceled, and we'll, we'll be back with him tomorrow. Yeah, hopefully. Speaking of which, we're going to be joined by a very special guest. Out from the field, out of the wild. His first time in the hot seat, Mr. Mincy, the destroyer. How's it going, man? It's good. I want to, you know, it kind of feels good to sit in here with you, Will, you and Ron, you know, kind of switching roles and uh, ha happy to be here. Honestly, uh, happy to be back. I got to tell you, I feel rejuvenated completely. I went back to Louisiana. I uh, saw some family. I had to go to a funeral over the weekend. But I felt like when I got off the plane yesterday, I said the summer starts now. I feel all kinds of positive vibes and energy. I'm looking forward to building the show with you. And I'm looking forward to whooping some ass and reminding everyone that uh, I'm still good at poker. 
Yeah, so speaking of still good at poker, you see DePaulo there heading to his table in the 1500 Deuce to Seven event, day two. Mincy, what's your summer schedule like? How many events are you playing out here? Uh, so basically, I play like the 1500s and down, hold them. I'm playing the 2K freeze out on Thursday, the Monster Stack. This weekend, uh, anything is 1500 and down, expect to see me. I'll be in the main event. And uh, just excited to play, uh, to be honest. I hadn't got to play a big summer schedule since 2012. I usually just show up before the main. So it's going to be fun. And got to say, love the momentum of this show so far, too. We're getting a good response. Uh, you know, I know we took a couple of days off, but we're back at it now. And we're going we're gonna to build this thing into a monster by the main event. Yeah, we're building this thing. Speaking of a monster, look at that Alan Kessler t-shirt. I'm not sure. Do you know what brand that is, Mincy? I do not, but I do want to see more. Yeah, what the, the chainsaw himself. A lot of uh, crazy images there. The legend, uh, Alan Kessler. You familiar with Alan at all? I'm very familiar with Alan. We go way, way back. And, uh, you know, it, it's funny. Uh, Chainsaw City, no bad vibes, even though he sometimes has them. Uh, hilarious character. I mean, the man can find negativity where it doesn't exist. i got to say, it's a special skill. Yeah, speaking of which, do you ever uh, get bothered by his complaints about having to pay more than a dollar for a soda or anything of that nature? No, but I, I will say this. I can see how it can be just construed as annoying. But the man does do a good watchdog for the ra uh, the rakes and the poker world. And, you know, it, it's good that he's a voice and kind of stays on it and shows where good value is. But that's a glass half full thing. The man, he bitches a lot, too. I couldn't help but notice this beautiful watch you have. If you want to show the yeah. camera, what what is that exactly? So, uh, you know, I always, as I grew up my entire life, I always dreamed of being a watch salesman. That's exactly where I thought I'd be. Uh, at this point in life, I've got a brick watch uh, on. I, I'm actually working for Poker Go and Brick Watch this summer and playing poker, so we got like three jobs at once. Uh, so far, so good. Got hired a couple weeks ago. We've sold a few of them, and uh, you know, taking Brick Watch to, to the people of the South and around America is my goal. Mincy, a very busy man doing sideline reports here for High Noon. There's Alan Kessler. I believe he's in the triple draw with DePaulo. Let's see if we can grab him for a quick word as he puts on his hoodie. Um, He's with Hanks because uh, Mincy's here with me now, uh, sitting at the desk. Let's see if Brent can give him a quick interview. See what the chainsaw has for us uh, in store today. Are we gonna are we gonna cut out there, producer John? Does he have some chips? Joined here with the one and only, the chainsaw, Alan Kessler. Alan, it looks like you got yourself a, a pile of chips. How good does this feel? It's okay, but I mean, uh, we're playing really big limits. You can lose three or four hands and be out. So. What, what is the name of the game again? Deuce to seven, triple draw. It's a very volatile game. You have to make a seven low. Okay. Uh, you've got some snacks here on the table as well. What's, what's the story behind uh, this bag? Free from the GG Poker Lounge. You like a lot of free food? Or have you found all the free food, beverages nothing inside? Here, nothing. This is the only thing I could get today. Does it mean a lot to you when you have free food, free items everywhere? I got this jacket for free. I got this shirt for free. I have these really nice free... Nike said I got. Really nice. <laughs> Beautiful. You heard it here first. Chainsaw. We got Ryan DePaulo right here. We're just going to shift over. Oh, hold on. Alan's got more. I've got four caches for the uh, No Gamble, No Future team. Today I'm going for my fifth cache. You heard that. Going for cache number five, Team No Gamble, No Future. We love Alan. We appreciate everything that Chainsaw does. Let's come on over here to Ryan. He's out here in the field. Ryan, how does it feel to be at a table with Alan Kessler? It feels um, amazing. He has four caches. Uh, I don't know if you guys heard. One oh one uh, one oh four WSOP. A legend. Oh, maybe by the self grading system, only the second ranked player in the world behind Mike Matisau. Um He's he's a, a, a phenom. What are your thoughts on Alan Kessler's deuce to seven triple draw game? He was giving out tips last night in the uh, in the Twitter space. I don't know if he knows that. I think he's drawing dead though. But uh, no, I don't know. He's probably I don't know. I'm trying to be funny, but. He did. He did give out. He did out. Gig. I can't speak. I'm so. Fl I'm a hot mess every time I come to the table. I gotta get. We're, the we're just gonna let it go here. Hold on. <laughs> I haven't even stacked my chips. I don't even know. Usually, I like ask these guys how much experience they have. How many times have you cashed this event before? It's too many. He's head shaking, guys. He's just. He doesn't know. Too many to know. Let me come right here in the middle. You've got yourself a bit of a sandwich. You've got DePaulo. You've got Kessler. How does it feel to be the meat in the middle? I thought I was going to be really sad to be so short today, but, like, if I bust this tournament, I think I might actually be happy. Any plans for after you do bust this tournament? Just celebrate not having to hang out with these two. 
There you go. Celebration's coming here. The meet in the middle, he's happy to get out. He wants the bust. Kessler, DiPaolo, Deuce to seven, triple draw. Back to you, Will and Mincy. Clouds the Clowns to the left, jokers to the right, he's stuck in the middle. Wow, that guy could not be more happy to be short stacked, was excited before he got seated in the table of death, the seat of death, the meat in the sandwich between DePaulo and Alan Kessler. Also, I think Dan Zach's at that table. Talk about a table of death in the deuce to seven triple draw, Mincy. Leave it leave it to Kessler. Brent tries to compliment him, man, you got a lot of chips, and just immediately says, oh, it's four bets, and just like immediately takes a negative. But say what you will about Alan Kessler. The man somehow has maneuvered spending upwards of 300-plus days a year in casinos and somehow still does it year after year. I mean, the man grinds slots. He finds, you know, he eats free popcorn at the table. He's, he's got Nikes. Every small advantage and edge you can find, this man finds it, and there's something to be said for that. Yeah, a connoisseur of free items. I mean, a complete outfit. Shoes, shirt, popcorn, everything's free. Are you are you on that plan, Mincy, or do you actually pay for your clothes? Uh, I, I get as much free stuff as possible, too. Look, uh, you know, we're all just trying to get by here, taking advantage of every situation we got. And I respect Kessler for, for somehow doing it. I mean, the man's been grinding and doing this for longer than I've been alive, I think. Yeah, how long have you been alive? 40 years. 40 years. Yeah, I turned 40 a couple weeks ago. Congratulations, guys. Yeah, yeah, I'm still alive at 40. It was a mental thing thinking about turning 40, but once you turn 40, you don't give a crap. Getting right. up there, uh, speaking of 40 and, and fitness things, you and Sean Deeb have some content coming out. What's your plan for the summer going deep with Deeb? What do you got in store for the people? Well, we're going to work out, and I'm going to be screaming at him in the gym a good bit, which ought to be fun. But the, the, the thing I'm most excited is I get to ask him a hand history and actually improve in poker. But uh, Sean and I are going to be playing the tag team together next Thursday, which should be fun. Uh, he's going to be running around multi-table. And we're going to have me asking him hand histories, us working out together, and I'm going to mooch off his free food, hopefully, and uh, in the chainsaw way. Poker pro-, pro Eric in chat says, Mincy doesn't look a day over 52. How do you feel about that? So what's funny is everybody would always say they can't tell if I'm 25 or 52, um, and I'm just in the middle of it. Nobody can ever tell what my age is. People think I look young. People think I look old. And, I mean, I guess I am kind of old now that I think about it. Well, speaking of which, that's going to be our show today, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. For Mincy in the wild on the floor, DePaulo here causing up drama, trying to get us canceled. I'm your host, Will Jaffe. This is High Noon. Tune in tomorrow at 12. For the dealers, the staff, producer John and his technical difficulties, the homeless man sleeping on the street right outside, thank you guys so much. That's our show.